We've surely encountered a lot of weird people every now and then, but those who bear the title racist have to be one of the worst kinds. Being racist is considered to be morally wrong and socially unacceptable. So you're, you're, your boss is Ryan, what's your name? Mo? Yes, sir. What the name is that? What is your actual real name? Mo what? And it's a good thing we have our heroes in blue to handle the situations that eventually escalate from racism. Here are instances when racists realize they've been arrested. My purse, please, I need to you collect your property. You are a prisoner now. I need to collect your belongings. I've never been a prisoner. Well, you are tonight. Please, please no, don't. No, do you're this. going to jail. Please don't. Please. Open. Police body cameras and cell phones captured a disturbing incident at a Walgreens in South Florida, leading to the arrest of a woman engaged in a racist rant. The Fort Lauderdale police responded to a call at the Walgreens on Southeast 17th Street, prompted by a highly charged confrontation among customers. The woman, identified as Luba Bozanich, seen in both cell phone and body camera footage, initiated the racist tirade. Ma'am, no weapons on you or anything like that? No, here. No, no, that's okay. Stand up for me, please. No. I just make sure you have any weapons on you. I don't want to touch you. I don't need the pockets. Okay. Under arrest for battery. I didn't do any battery. No, when you spit on people, that's I did, battery. No, I did not. Listen, he verbally abused uh, me. Well, that doesn't give you the right to spit on him. That's <laughs> what you verbally abused me as soon as I got here. Did I spit on you? No. You're in arrest for battery. Do no, yep, hurts. definitely doing that. That hurts. That. Yeah, they're handcuffs. They're not for comfort. Can Let's I go. take my purse? Absolutely. Come on. Oh, Let's please go. don't. No, oh, don't no, you're hurt definitely me, going to jail. Let's go. Walk. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. uh, can I leave my car here? Uh, that's absolutely fine. Sure. The incident reportedly began when the victims were completing their checkout at Walgreens, and Luba entered without wearing a mask. Upon being asked by an employee to wear a mask, Luba erupted into a fit of yelling and ranting, targeting Muslims, and even resorting to spitting on the husband of one of the victims. Afterwards, the police were contacted, and the rest you'll see on body cam. Yeah, this is unbelievable. Yep. Unbelievable. Officer. Officer, this is unbelievable. Let's go. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, I'll get a good attorney. God bless you. Yep. God bless me. God, because I'm a Christian. I, Christians don't talk like you. No, but you know what? N no. I just went through. Can I okay. put that in my purse, I, please? I need Will to collect you your property. You are a prisoner now. I need to collect your belongings. I've never been a prisoner. Well, you are tonight. Please. Please no, don't. No, you're going to jail. Please don't. Please Open your hand. What is this? It's my Kleenex. Okay, so let it go. Well, can you give me a Kleenex? Officer, please tell uh, me. Just get, yeah, just, uh, they, they said it is our prosecution. <laughs> they said no now? Because they told me yes. They told me no to stop. Confirm please, for please me. Don't or... do this. Please. I didn't do anything. How about you just stand there and stop talking? How about we do that? Just... How about we do that? That doesn't give you an excuse to act the way that you're acting. Okay. Not just stop hey, talking. You have to leave. We'll take care of you. Thank you. So Luba did not expect that she would be put in cuffs and is well on her way to spending jail time. She quickly plays the victim card by claiming she didn't do anything and that the man verbally abused her first. The cops weren't having any of it though, and made it clear that her response of spitting was a no-go, constituting an act of battery and leading to her inevitable arrest. The officers saw me last night. I've been having a lot happen in my life. You really think that's going to happen? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you... When she realizes that she's definitely going to jail for what she did, she switches up and starts to apologize. She starts expressing remorse, citing the challenges in her life as a contributing factor. In an attempt to salvage what was left of her image, she emphasized having friends who are Muslim, passionately denying any racist intentions. Can you apologize too? I apologize. I'm not a racist. I have friends that are Muslim. Okay? I have friends that are Muslim. During all the commotion, the couple speaks to another officer and arrives at a conclusion not to press charges on the woman. The officer relays this decision to the arresting officer, who responsibly verifies the information before opting to release the woman with a stern warning. Despite this, she decides to take a jab at one of the officers, asserting that he knows she's not a bad person because her father supposedly served in the army. No, okay, so Except those those same Muslims I that you were talking to just decided your fate and they elected to not Thank prosecute. You. God bless you. Yeah, God bless them, because yeah. if it was up to me, you'd be going to jail. Come on, but they decided, as the victim, that you were not going to jail. Oh, I suggest you watch your mouth because well, the particular, shut up, listen, the particular oh God, group that you decide to mouth off to 
we're professional and we're nice. Some people might kick you in your face and then we're gonna come pick up the pieces. So I suggest you watch your mouth. This officer saw me last night. He knows I'm not a bad person. He I don't think he- I didn't know you. Well, I just thought you were having issues yesterday. Because of my uh, card. My father was with the army. He was a captain in the army. Did anybody get her 14? However, the officer, being honest, denies any knowledge of her cause. Well, he doesn't know her. After letting her off the cuffs, she continues to exchange words with the officer instead of leaving. Look at, look what you did to my aunt. You should yeah. be going to jail. Huh? Oh. Can you get me my purse, please? Hey, you got, hey, you got, a, you got a 14? I I'm getting, no, I thought, I, I thought he was holding it. Get your stuff and leave. No, what do I do with this? Grab what do you do with what? No, that purse. That's grab unfortunate. Well, I've never had this happen to me Then before. keep your mouth shut and you won't have it happen again. Don't talk to me. Literally, keep your mouth shut because you spit on somebody. Listen, you, you don't know what he did to me You don't before. have the right to ask me how to talk to you when you're disrespecting people. He disrespected me first. Literally spitting on people. Gather your belongings, count your blessings, and leave. Despite being repeatedly instructed to leave, she insists on staying and proclaims her identity as a Christian. In response, the officer suggests that she research the meaning of the word Christian, expressing his concern over her actions. In an attempt to establish her credibility, she shares the name of her church and threatens to report the officer to her pastor. Listen, I'm a Bye. Christian. Yeah, yeah. Well, you need to look and that I, up. And I go to Calvary Chapel. You need to, right. that's concerning. That's, yeah. Yeah, very concerning. Yeah, we'll talk to Pastor Doug. I, I will, actually. Right. I will talk to Pastor Doug and let her know how you Come feel about Sunday. different religions. Sunday for the church. Okay, for sure. Okay? Yeah. 11 a.m. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, officer. Good yeah, good night, man. Thank you. Yeah, and thank safe. you, officer. You're cool. respectful. You're respectful. After expressing gratitude to the other officers, she turns back to the main officer, accusing him of being disrespectful. It's only after this exchange that she eventually complies and departs from the scene. So your 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 boss is running the what's your name? Mo? Yes, sir. What the name is that? What's your actual real name? Mo what? God damn. All right, you know what? You know what? I really don't give a what some to say. Meet a 38 year old resident of Pasadena who found himself on the brink of arrest after unleashing a racist tirade upon an AT&T store employee in Friendswood. The incident unfolded at 101 West Parkwood around 6 p.m. Cell phone footage captured the man, identified as Christian, engaging in a heated exchange with the clerk. Insisting on speaking to a manager, when the employee declined, explaining he couldn't call the manager, Christian demanded he relay a message about an impatient customer who refused to interact with peons. You have his number. I didn't ask you to call him. Or for me to call him. Give it to me. But you can call him. I'm not going to ask you to. You can ask him to come in, though. Because you have a very impatient customer in here that's not going to deal with peons. He's going to deal with somebody in charge. You know, your driver's youngster. I'm charging my phone right now. Huh? He's looking at his driver's license number now. But no, but you told him you couldn't do it because he didn't have his driver's license on him. We're supposed to have a driver's license on him. Well, you know what? You know how many times the state takes that for stupid things? You don't. You can hear him inquire about the cashier's name. When the cashier identifies himself as Mohammed, Christian launches into a string of profanities targeted at Arabs. He boldly asserts that he has been responsible for harming individuals of their ethnicity for the past six months. The woman recording the incident becomes alarmed and speaks up about her concerns. 
the situation becomes more troubling as Christian reveals his animosity based on racial prejudice. For the next time, don't you drive me these guys and offer options? Very blunt, who's your manager? To be honest. Because honestly, I really give shit at your attitude. Who's your manager? I don't give shit when he's here. What is his name? So I can call. Ryan. Huh? Ryan. Ryan what? Williams. Ryan Williams. Yes, sir. That's your main store manager. Yes, sir. Because very blunt, I don't give a your, your opinion is or anybody else's. I mean, I've been killing people to make sure you and him and everybody else has their goddamn civilians' rights for years. That's the reason he came and got his own. So you're, your your boss is Ryan. What's your name? Mo. Yes, sir. What the name is that? What's your actual real name? Mo. What? Goddamn. All right, you know what? You know what? I really don't give a what some has to say. I really don't give a about some goddamn Arab that I've been killing their goddamn kind for six months. Afterwards, he turns his attention to the woman who was recording the incident on her cell phone, but she prefers to keep her identity private. His rant doesn't stop at six months. He boldly boasts that he has been involved in harming Arabs for longer than she has been alive. However, she calmly states that she is 55 years old, making her older than him. Almost two, actually, Super nice. two years, six months on the last country I was in. Because okay. because people like this are the reason our country's going what it's going to. Because I've been killing his kind for longer than you've probably been alive. I'm older than you, dude. How old do you think you are? How old do you I, think I am? How old do I think I am? I'm 55 years old. That's cute. Okay. His kind, I've been killing for almost 20 years. I've been on five different continents. Hence the reason he brought his uncle to come handle shit for him. Well. The woman tries to engage Christian in a conversation about what triggered his aggression, but it becomes apparent that he's not receptive to reason. She decides to take matters into her own hands and informs him that she has called the police. As Christian exits the store, a Friendswood police officer is there to meet him. I really don't give a we were, about some we little peon Arab who actually doesn't even belong here. We were in line first. We were actually trying to get service. And oh, sweetie, you're in. fine. I thought you worked here. Uh, okay. And I called the police. That's fine. Yeah, it is fine. The issue, the issue was the boy inside. And, and I came back from the last man. As the video concludes, the police confront Christian regarding the incident. Meanwhile, Mohammed, the person who shared the video, reveals that he was born in Pakistan but has been an American citizen since the age of five. The aftermath of the incident sees 38-year-old Joey Christian facing charges of public intoxication and disorderly conduct. Despite the gravity of these charges, he has quickly posted bail for both Class C misdemeanor offenses. But we're no, product, listen, product, listen, product. Listen, okay. Where, where are we going with this? So, and that's what we're going to talk about, okay? So, um, we're going to take it down. We're going to arrest you, okay? Um, oh, you're kidding for, me. For, yep. So, for what? Uh, in Scottsdale, Arizona, the man you see in this video was arrested and fired from his job after he was seen in a video using a racial slur while confronting two black men. The encounter happened Friday as famous YouTuber Dre Abram and his roommate, both of whom are black were filming a podcast for Abrams' YouTube channel in the neighborhood of Old Town Scottsdale. Oh. Hi, is this Paul? Yeah. Hey, Paul, this is Officer of the Scottsdale Police Department. Yeah. Hey, I was wondering if I could uh, talk with you for a few minutes. Are you available? Sure. While they were at it, they were confronted by a man who used racial terms after asking them what they were doing. In the recorded encounter, Dre Abram highlights that Paul Ung, the identified individual, had been photographing them earlier that morning before approaching and openly admitting to being racist. Paul goes on to declare that the area is a racially offensive zone. In response, despite the offensive comments, Hey Paul, how you doing? Good, good. Good. Didn't it door open? No, it didn't, didn't open. Stayed locked, yeah. so I don't know. Yeah. So what's going on? Um, so we got information about an incident that happened earlier um, out here on the street. I was just wondering what, what led up to all that. Well, I saw these two black guys. Okay. Abram and his roommate assert their intention to proceed with recording their video. 
They confidently inform Paul that his racist remarks won't hinder their plans. Abram politely requests Paul to step back, allowing them to continue shooting while capturing the entire interaction on camera. During the exchange, Abram mentions his recent move to Arizona and emphasizes his determination to pursue his activities without interference. Early in the morning. Do you remember what time? Seven, seven something. Okay. I walk my dogs early in the morning. Okay. And uh, the guy was going around with a camera. Pretty sophisticated camera. Okay. Nothing like, you know, not, not a tourist. Okay. Subsequently, the police revealed that the business owner reported the incident after receiving numerous negative and threatening comments. Consequently, an officer arrived at Paul's location for an interrogation. In an attempt to initiate communication, the officer introduced himself through a call, giving him the option to come down. However, Paul tells the officer not to worry and requests the officer to wait as he buzzes him in. The officer waits for quite a while before Paul finally shows up and opens the door. It seems like buzzing the officer in didn't work, so he had to come to do it himself. Without much ado, the officer gets straight to the point, questioning Paul about the incident. In response, Paul explains that he likes to keep an eye on his neighborhood for suspicious individuals. Basically, like, you know, we had the, the incidents up here at the mall, and then when we had the march back here and everything, you know what? I live upstairs. I don't need anybody coming down here and torching anything, because I'd be nothing. I'd be gone. My wife is basically housebound. Okay. And I can't evacuate her. So I gotta be very careful. So I see these guys do all this. According to him, he observed Abram and his friend standing near a car with a Michigan license plate, leading him to take photos, as he believed they were casing the area. Additionally, Paul mentions that Abram's initial comments were about other white people being racist, which influenced his decision to present himself as such. So I took a picture of those guys. And they took exception to the fact that I took a picture of them. Well, you're taking pictures here, why can't I take a picture of you? First words out of his mouth were, there's a lot of white people around here that are racist. I said, well, have a look, look at one. And I told him, I said, look, we don't need any niggers around here. That's exactly what I told him. After that, he claimed they went back and forth, exchanging words before he walked away without touching anyone. He then goes ahead to show the officer the pictures he took, asking if the guy filed a complaint. The officers, however, informed him that they hadn't received any communication from the individual involved, only from concerned business owners in the vicinity, which is why they decided to ensure that everything was in order. Here's the first picture I took of these guys, okay? Those two guys there. That's the license number. I can forward all these to you. DHH 3117, and uh, I don't even know what state that is. Yeah, it looks like Michigan. Is it Michigan? Place? Yeah, it just says pure Michigan. Okay. Paul finds this situation suspicious, emphasizing that there are usually very few people on the street during those early morning hours. He adds that he had shared the pictures with local business owners, one of whom mentioned being unable to see the license plate in the photos. As a result, Paul returned to capture better images of the vehicle. Furthermore, he reports to the officer that the other person had posted their encounter on social media, despite him believing he did nothing wrong. And, um, he couldn't read the license plate. So I said, okay, I'll go get a closer, I'll go get a closer look. So I got a closer look. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, this is really suspicious, because seven o'clock in the morning, there's usually nobody on the street, okay? So for these guys to be sitting out here, messing around with cameras and everything, but look in the background here. The officer attempts to clarify to Paul that Abram and his friend have the right to be in the area and engage in their activities since they reside there. However, Paul counters by suggesting that if they engage in suspicious activities, they are no longer in normal circumstances. He implies that they may have sinister intentions, such as targeting wealthy individuals and causing pain and suffering. To see if there was there was something more that led up to it, and uh, no, nope, that was it. That was okay. it. It was it was totally just uh, uh, people that were out of place. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate you talking, man. I appreciate your time. No, not a problem. All right. No I'll let you get back to your night then. Yeah, I was getting ready to go to bed. 
Paul continues to share various details including his past experiences. Despite Paul's divergent narrative, the officer remains focused on understanding the events that triggered the confrontation. In response, Paul asserts that the altercation was primarily about people he deemed to be out of place. Hey Paul. Come on in. You got your sidekick in there again today? <laughs> yeah. Use your back up. After that interview, the officer returns the next day with fellow officers to officiate an arrest. At first, Paul is shocked to see how many officers are present, but the officer tells him they're here to clear some things up about what they had talked about the previous day. He starts by asking if Paul thinks the comments he made might have been provoking or insulting to the other party. But Paul insists that the first verbal attack came from Abram. That's when the officers inform him that they're aware of the video Abram made and posted, and so his story doesn't tally with what they had seen. So. Let's see how Paul tries to get himself out of this one. I'm being arrested. They're gonna take, yeah, I'm being arrested for disorderly conduct. No, I'm not kidding you. But they're gonna take me down, they're gonna book me, and then they're gonna release me. I'll be home. Yeah, I understand. You know it, I know it. It's surprising that Paul chose those words as his response. He actually told the officers that there's no need to waste so much energy on this matter, since it'll all be forgotten by next week. Clearly, he doesn't see his offense in the matter, so leave it to the cops to teach him where he stands in this matter. Paul is promptly arrested for disorderly conduct. During the arrest, he informs the officer about the presence of weapons on him, and requests their removal. A request the officer complies with by conducting a thorough pat-down. Subsequently, Paul asks the officers to contact his wife, so he can let her know about the situation. Let's just go back up there. We can just, just want to go. <coughs> yeah, I, I can go you up can there take and take it, it to her. If you that's... don't need to. We just go up there, open the door, shove it in the door. And... I want to avoid going back up in general. If he's okay, if you're okay with him just going knocking on okay, the door me, and then me, passing no, it off. Let me call her though to let her know. Okay, so okay. That, so so she, she knows he's coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. After letting him inform his wife, he is escorted out by the officers. As they're wondering what to do with all his stuff. Paul suggests that the other officer takes his stuff back upstairs. So once again, they contact his wife so she can come down and retrieve the items. Meanwhile, the other officer takes Paul to the front, where he bundles him into the cop car. Uh, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can or will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to the presence of an attorney to be with you prior to questioning, and to be with you during questioning if you so desire. If you cannot afford an attorney, you have the right to have an attorney appointed to you prior to questioning. Do you understand these rights? Okay. Back at the station, Paul has his rights read to him, after which they go over a few questions concerning the incident and discuss where Paul was wrong and why he was arrested. And as earlier mentioned, he was charged with disorderly conduct for allegedly using derogatory and racist terms. He was booked and then released, but it certainly didn't end there. I mean, listen, I'm not a bad guy. You guys want to arrest me? First of all, you know, my, my constitutional rights to free, for, for, to free speech are being trampled on because, hey, I said something, he said something, and so, you know, what are we gonna do? We're gonna go to jail over this? Russ Lyon Sotheby's International Realty, where Paul worked, revealed that he had been an independent sales professional with the company, but had been inactive and had not conducted any property sales for the past two years. Following the release of the video, the company took immediate action by severing his license, terminating his association with them immediately, and denouncing his reprehensible behavior in a statement. Um, I mean, that's where I come from. I'm, I'm not being, I don't want to be uh, uncooperative or anything else. No, and I appreciate your cooperation with us. You, you... The company emphasized a zero-tolerance policy for racism or discrimination of any kind, asserting that it never has and will never condone such behavior. Furthermore, they announced their intention to contact the Arizona Department of Real Estate and recommend the revocation of his license. Come here, Jeffrey. Turn around. What are you going to do? We're going to take you to jail today. No, well, for Stop. what? Stop. You're for a disorder, trespassing. For disorderly You're a trespassing. You're a trespassing. Stop You're trespassing. This incident occurred on April 15th, 2023 in Ohio. Body cam footage shows officers responding to a call against a man named Jeffrey Holmes. Jeffrey was intoxicated as the officers arrived at the scene, and the neighbors complained about his disorderly conduct. Jeffrey didn't deny any of the accusations made against him and claimed what he was doing was legal. He proceeds to disrespect the officers, and they do the needful by placing him under arrest. 
a neighbor. It's what all, crime did I commit? Just saying that you're yelling provocative language to people at the I'm park. I'm yelling provocative language. That's what is I that was, a crime? That's what I was told. Well, it depends. If it's causing alarm to people, it is. No, it ain't. Yeah, it is. You're a liar. An officer arrives at Jeffrey Holmes' property and approaches him. Jeffrey realizes that someone called the police on him and asks the officer. The officer remains professional and doesn't disclose the identity of the individual who called them. Jeffrey is accused of yelling provocative slurs at people in the neighborhood, and these slurs can be considered threats. The offense is a crime if it causes alarm to the people around. But Jeffrey says it isn't. He calls the officer a liar and says he has freedom of speech. When you're causing alarm or annoyance to, or an inconvenience to multiple people, that is a crime. No, it ain't. Yes, it is. No, it is. It's called disorderly conduct. You're a liar. You can't be drunk You're causing somebody. I'm on private property, man. The officer explains that being a nuisance, even when you're on your property, is disorderly conduct. Jeffrey thinks he can do whatever he wants on his property and asks the officer if he wants to speak to his lawyer. He says he loves getting drunk on his property, and the officer says it isn't wrong. Getting drunk on your property isn't a crime, but causing a nuisance to others is. Jeffrey confirms he was yelling anti-Semitic and racial slurs at people in the park, and the officer says he isn't allowed to do that. He tells the officer to leave as the officer asks for a means of identification. Jeffrey ignores the officer and proceeds to return to his backyard. But you still can't be causing annoyance and alarm to somebody. That's bull****, man. When you're intoxicated, I can do you whatever I want on my property. That's not exactly true. You're, you're a liar. And that's not a crime. There you go. But, but are you? But are you? But are, but are you? Multiple officers arrive at the scene, and the officer on the ground explains the situation. He informs them that Jeffrey admitted to yelling racial and anti-Semitic slurs at neighbors. The officers decide to locate the witness and take their statement. They realize they might have to take Jeffrey down to the station because of his behavior. The officers meet a woman who informs them that Jeffrey is known for his behavior. Her husband steps out of the house and confirms that Jeffrey uses racist slurs to insult the people around him. They state that most of the residents have children around, and Jeffrey's misconduct makes them feel unsafe. He even tries to be intimidating while driving and threatens to hit other drivers. Other witnesses state that Jeffrey trespasses on their property, and they often ask him to leave. The witness's security camera alerts him when there is an intruder on his property, and it's always Jeffrey. Yeah. Always. Yelling yeah. at people in the park as you can see straight through there. Yeah, that's kind of why we got called down here today, because he was yelling. The officers realize that Jeffrey is a problem for everyone, and they ponder what they should do. Some neighbors say Jeffrey is a decent person when he isn't intoxicated, but that doesn't mean he won't get intoxicated again and cause more trouble. The female officer points out that Jeffrey might continue his disorderly conduct until he passes out. They realize they can't just leave him because he is on his property. They then make the decision to arrest Jeffrey for disorderly conduct. They approach him and ask him to turn around. You're trespassing. You're trespassing. You're trespassing. You are trespassing. No, this isn't a gun. You are trespassing. Stop. 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 You're trespassing. Hold on, let me double check. You're trespassing. You're trespassing. Jeff, stop. You're trespassing. Get off of me! Stop! You're violating my- The officers approach Jeffrey and place handcuffs on him. He tells them they are trespassing and repeats the statement several times. Jeffrey says they are violating his First Amendment rights and asks why they are arresting him. He begins screaming at the officers while asking why he is being detained. The officer tries to state the reason for his arrest, which is disorderly conduct while intoxicated. But Jeffrey continues yelling as he says he is being detained illegally. They take Jeffrey to the police vehicle as he yells he is on private property. Jeffrey begins to insult the officers and calls them liars. He proceeds to call the officers communists and they lock him in the patrol vehicle. The officers take him to the Hamilton County Justice Center for further processing. What am I going to jail for? Jeff, you gotta, Jeff, you gotta sleep this Jeff, up, Jeff. look at me. Hey, you're, hey, hey, you're being, you didn't tell me you're, what I'm you're being, being detained I'm, try, I'm trying to tell you right now. You're what being, am I being detained for? Stop. Stop. The officers arrive at the county justice center. Jeffrey asks if they care about him. He sarcastically blows a kiss at the officers as they help him exit the car. Jeffrey accuses them of detaining him off private property and begins insulting the officer he holds responsible. They take him out of the car as he continues yelling and help him pick up his hat. Jeffrey says he will sue the officers for what they have done and they will take him into the building. Jeffrey was charged with disorderly conduct, and the case is undergoing proceedings. Now we'll show you all the paperwork. Okay? I can't believe it. Out of Brookhaven? Out of Brookhaven?
Brookhaven? I've never even been pulled over in Brookhaven. Well, it's showing that you have a ticket that you did not pay or you didn't go to court. A ticket for what? It'll say it ticket? on there. He will let you know. You mean a parking ticket? I'm going to jail Whatever. for a parking ticket? You said it's a parking it, ticket. It, is know. that what it was? But why don't you ask? I don't know what it is. Okay, it's, he'll show you in a minute. So, okay? This incident occurred on June 22nd, 2019 in Brookhaven, Georgia. Popular reality TV star Raymond Scott, popularly known as Raymond Benzino, was stopped by some officers based on a warrant for his arrest. Benzino failed to clear a ticket, forcing the officers to take action by arresting him and taking him to jail. Man, man, I just need to know if the so I, 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 I can quite call my lawyer. Okay, hold on, hold on, sir. Can we explain to her what's going on? Yeah, I know what's going on. Well, okay, well, as soon as I pulled up right here to drop my son off, he just he just runs my tag and he says I was blocking the street. Yeah, we're allowed to run your tag. No, but I'm saying, what, what did I do wrong to run my tag? That's fine that if you right. feel that okay, way, but I'm telling right. you you're not. You have well, a warrant I have that out. Right. I have that right to feel like I'm being harassed. You can okay? feel that way, okay. but you okay. have right. an right. order. Right now we are a conformant warrant. If this warrant's valid, I'm going to file a complaint. That's fine. No, okay. no That's fine. Because I know it's fine because you know what? Because at the end of the day, I haven't done it. Sir, step over here because I don't it want to talk to you. It, it does. I was okay when I'm stepping here. It does. You know what I'm saying? This is petty. This is petty. I paid my taxes. I do think you come over here harassed me because you said I was parked over there. Why don't you wait till I stop it? Question. Okay, so you're done with the question, right? Yes, sir. Can I explain it? Yes, Stop me. Okay, cut up. Okay. So, when I pulled up, you were in front of me. I did not see anybody get out. So, you were stopping in the middle of the roadway. I don't know what's going on. So, I ran your car. All right? Here. Listen Here. to him. And then you pulled up. You pulled up pocket space. All right? Benzino argued with the officers about the case and claimed not to know anything about the ticket. Everything was going well. But things suddenly took a turn as he was put in handcuffs. Can I explain something? Why was you going to pull me over? All right, look. Explain that. Look at my voice. That's right? okay, because I'm taking Can you bring it down with me? That's all right. Can you bring it down with me, okay? That's okay. If your vehicle was parked, okay? You heard what he just said, right? He said he followed me. Listen. He said he was behind okay. me. He should have pulled me over. He never pulled me over. A female officer arrives at an arrest scene where a male officer talks to Raymond Benzino. Benzino fails to understand why the male officer on scene ran his tag. The officer accuses him of blocking the street with how he parked, and the female officer informs him they are allowed to run his tag. They are allowed by law to run his tag whenever they want, and she offers to explain the situation to him better than her colleague did. Benzino says the officer's actions are a form of harassment. The female officer tries to explain what is going on, but Benzino continues talking. Okay. All right. Even if your vehicle was parked, your tag, your tag has a wanted hit. Even if your vehicle was parked. I need to know why. That's already, I established you that, understand ma'am. Yes, officer. Okay. He points at where he parked and states his reason for parking, which is to drop his son off. The female officer explained that they were simply enforcing the law and that there was a warrant out for his arrest due to an unsettled ticket. They ask if he got a ticket that he failed to pay off or appear in court to settle. Benzino continues asking why the officer ran his tag. They explain to him several times that his tag is public record, and they are allowed to run it whenever they want. Benzino claims the officers are harassing him, and that the situation isn't fair. But the fact that with him pulling up, and, and I'm okay, harassing me for no reason, we need to find you wh have a wh why was that? For your he didn't arrest. know that. He didn't he did. know that. When he, he runs know your that. tag. No, okay, but okay, but I need to know why he ran, why he was behind me. Okay. What was the protocol of him pulling me over? Sure. That's tag, harassment. You have a warrant. That's it. This is crazy. The male officer decides to talk straight to Benzino and asks how the situation isn't fair when he has a warrant for failing to settle the traffic ticket. He asks Benzino how they are harassing him when he has a warrant. The officers assure him that they aren't harassing him, but he says he has the right to feel that way. Benzino says the warrant is petty because he pays all his taxes. Paying taxes doesn't automatically make you above the law, and that's something Benzino should understand. So here, here, let me explain to you, okay? As soon as you have warrant, and that we, get, we extend a, 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 a paper, I understand that, sir. So I understand We extend it. It, but otherwise, listen, I, you cut me off. I understand and, that, but you have to tell me that. I understand We extend the courtesy, otherwise you'll be in handcuffs right now because you have a warrant. Let me tell you that, okay? But the reason is you're not in a, in, in, in handcuffs because you are not combative. You are argumentative, oh, but you're not combative, so I don't it's want to good. Be argumentative or combative with you, officer. It's just that man, like, like I got a, well, a three-year-old boy up there. I got my oldest boy right up there. 
that's why that's not, that's why you're not in handcuffs. That's why we sit in the middle of the roadway. Benzino says he wants to file a complaint and that the situation doesn't add up. The male officer tries to explain better but complains, Benzino continues cutting him off. Benzino seems to be confused as he asks for an explanation, but stops the officer from explaining by cutting him off. The officer says he had intentions of pulling Benzino over for stopping in the middle of the road. He ran his tag in the process and saw a warrant for a pending ticket. Benzino begins to raise his voice, and the male officer moves to his vehicle. So you pull up, okay. out of the roadway. No, no, it's not out of the roadway. I pulled around the corner. Okay. Off, to drop him I'm off. Dropping him off. Right. Dropping him off. Okay. okay. Now, as I drop him off, then um, I'm noticing that he's behind. Yeah, I have so I said, okay, let me pull up to a parking space. Oh, and that was it. Then that was it. Now, my thing is, if he was following me the whole time, then, if he was following me the whole time, how come he wasn't the one that pulled me over? Even if he was behind you, runs your tag. It doesn't even make sense for me to okay. even talk about it. All, All right. right. Benzino suddenly claimed the officer was following him and harassing him for no reason. The male officer returns and says, he is meant to be in handcuffs due to the warrant, but he is not combative. The female officer confirms that they usually detain people with warrants until they confirm the situation, but haven't put him in handcuffs because he is calm. Benzino says he is a good guy and intentionally pulled over when he saw the cop following him. The officer placed Benzino in handcuffs and said the ticket was issued in Brookhaven. Benzino denies ever receiving a ticket from Brookhaven and asks if he is going to jail because of a parking ticket. The female officer says they will inform him of what it is and asks if he got a parking ticket because he suddenly mentioned it. They take out his belongings and give them to a relative who is standing by the corner. Benzino suddenly gets aggressive as the officer takes him to the car. He begins cursing at them and orders the male officer to turn on the AC. Benzino yells while in the vehicle, and the male officer shows him the warrant for his arrest. Even if he was in the roadway parked, let's say his vehicle was parked, he ran, he ran his tag as law enforcement. Can you roll this window up, please? All right. He ran the tag, and his vehicle comes back as a wanted hit. It shows his picture. He sees that he is a driver. He gets him out. We usually put him in handcuffs to, to, until we confirm, okay? He didn't because he's been cool even though he is arguing, but that's fine. Um, he didn't put him in handcuffs. It has been confirmed he does have a warrant, okay? Take me. Okay. Let's go. Take me. Take me. Tell her where it is. Suck take me to court. Oh, All I right. got you. Let me out! Oh, I got you. The female officer explains the situation to Benzino's relative and she is more understanding than he is. She explained that the situation had nothing to do with race, and that he would have another court date. The lady wishes to speak to Benzino, but he refuses to calm down, and continues insulting the officers. He even goes as far as using anti-Asian slurs on the male officer, some of which are beyond degrading. The officer drove away with Benzino and took him to jail. This incident occurred on December 24, 2019 in McMinnville, Oregon. The video, taken by a woman named Amora Robinson, shows a furious Amber Rocco yelling at Amora while insulting her and chanting racial slurs. The woman's anger leads her to pick up a weapon against Amora. The incident was triggered simply because Amora's boyfriend parked too close to Amber's car. She just lashed out at us. Yeah, you're racist as So this could happen to anybody else. He's really trying to stab him What's just up? because- No, I can't yeah, you stand are. up and it's called self yeah. defense, you my daughter was asleep and she woke up crying to some lady screaming at us. Who are you talking to? Like, don't be talking to me like that. And I'm not trying to do nothing because everybody around me is white. Amber Rocco can be seen yelling at Amora Robinson while Amora sits in her car. She slams the car door while yelling, and Amora is left in shock by her violent actions. Amber can be seen holding a knife while yelling at Amora and her boyfriend. Imora's daughter was in the car and woke up crying because of the screaming. Imora later told reporters that Amber was harassing her boyfriend 
and also physically assaulted him by slapping and spitting on him. I wasn't really frightened for myself, but I mean, my daughter was in the car and I had told her that previously, like, my daughter's in the car, can you please leave? And she just kept saying, I don't care. And yeah, so that kind of frightened me because she didn't care that there was a child in the car. I escalate the situation and try to remove myself and get out of there because I didn't, I don't know what's going to happen. A bunch of white officers coming my way and I'm the only black person, I don't know what could happen to me. She can go to jail, whatever the case might be. But something definitely needs to happen because she just got away with it. Imora asked Amber to calm down because her child was in the vehicle. To her surprise, Amber didn't care about the child and continued her racist rant. Imora was scared for her daughter's safety because of the ammunition Amber was wielding. Amber eventually returned to her vehicle as officers arrived. The couple was frightened because they were the only black people around. This incident occurred on Christmas Eve and probably ruined the holiday for the couple. Amber Rocco faced arraignment on two felony counts for intimidation and unlawful weapon use, alongside two misdemeanor charges for menacing and harassment.